Hi fifth grade beginners. I'm Mrs. Hallett and I'm the band director this year at Jefferson, Madison, Mitchell, and Walker. Hello fifth graders. I'm Mr. Hallett, the band director over at Hoover and Irving Elementary School in West Dallas. Hello, my name is Ms. Gandry and I am the band director at Central High School and Franklin Elementary School. Hello, my name is Miss Lydia Clow. I teach at Longfellow and Wilson Elementary. Hello, my name is Miss Easton. I teach at West Milwaukee Intermediate School, Horace Mann, and Pershing Elementary School. And I'll be your band director for this year. I'm really happy that you're thinking of joining our program. Uh, band is a lot of fun. It's kind of like an exclusive fifth grade club uh, because only fifth graders are allowed in it. Learning to play an instrument and belong to a school band can play a very important role in your child's development. Numerous studies have shown that playing a musical instrument increases the productivity of a child in many other areas of learning, such as math and reading. Children also learn dedication, teamwork, and enjoy the accomplishment of learning to play an instrument. In this video, we're going to show our fifth graders the different instruments that they have the opportunity of playing if they choose to join the band program. We will play each of the instruments and talk a little bit about them so that you can choose what you think will work best for you and get your family excited about joining band. Without further ado, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Loud in it. I'm demonstrating the flute today. Okay, the flute is the only end blown instrument, which means you're blowing across a hole to make sound instead of instant to the end of the instrument. Um, it's a long instrument and it goes off to the right side of your body and the song I'm going to play for you right now is Jurassic Park. Flute is the highest instrument in the band, except for the piccolo, but in, in elementary school we do not have piccolos. So again, this is the flute. Uh, right now I'm going to introduce you to the oboe. This is what it looks like. Okay. It is an end-blown instrument, which means you're going to blow into a mouthpiece on the end of the instrument. Um, it's a really unique sounding instrument, and I'm going to play you a song that I think everybody will know. Okay, so that is the oboe. Thanks, Mrs. Hallett. That was awesome. Um, I'm Miss Gandry. I am teaching at Central and Franklin this year, and I am coming at you with two different woodwind instruments. So what I have right here might look really similar to the oboe that you just saw. However, this is a clarinet. Now, they look really similar, but the one difference is oboe is a double reed instrument, which means it has two reeds that vibrate together, and clarinet is a single reed instrument. So this one reed, when you get it a little wet, will vibrate up against this mouthpiece when you blow through it to make sound. Now I really like the clarinet because it can play really low notes and it can play really high notes and everything in between. So with this instrument, um, I'm going to play a song for you, and I want to see if you can guess what it is. instrument from the woodwind family and that is the alto saxophone. Now you see me here 
um, putting this on. This is a neck strap. Now this instrument is a little bit heavy, so this neck strap helps you hold it up. Uh, the alto saxophone is also a single reed instrument because of this guy right here. And the exact same thing happens, even though this looks really different than the clarinet that I had before. Um, the air vibrates the reed against the mouthpiece, goes through the tube, and your fingers change the notes just like on the flute, the oboe, and the clarinet. So this is, what, is kind of what brings them all together in the woodwind family, right? This alto saxophone is a medium-sized saxophone. It's what you would usually start on when you're beginning the instrument. There's a smaller version of the alto or the saxophone called the soprano saxophone that plays higher notes, a bigger one that plays lower notes called the tenor, and one even bigger than that that plays the lowest notes, and that's the berry sax. But like I said, if you're starting out, you're probably going to use the alto. Right? So just like the clarinet, I'm going to play a little song for you so you can kind of hear what it sounds like. <sighs> for your introduction to the woodwind section. I am here to start our introduction into the brass section of the band, starting with the trumpet. The trumpet is, a, of course, a brass instrument. It involves a couple pieces that, are, um, that you will find throughout almost all of the brass instruments, including the mouthpiece here, the valves, though some instruments in the brass family do not have valves, we'll get to that a little bit later, and then the bell of the instrument. And you'll see there's also all this tubing here that takes in the air. Now, with, I caught it, <laughs> with a mouthpiece, you have the two different parts of the mouthpiece. You have the cup where you blow the air through, and then you also have the stem that goes into the instrument like so, so that the air will go through the entire instrument. With brass instruments, what is unique only to brass instruments is that we make our sound by a buzz. Now the buzz is created by pursing your lips together and blowing through. Now, buzz doesn't sound so great without the instrument on top, so let's add the layers. I'm first going to add the mouthpiece. Now we're getting some actual sound here. As you can see, I was changing the position of my mouth, going tighter and looser with the corners of my mouth to make the pitch higher and lower. Now, I can take that buzz now that I have it on the mouthpiece and I can put it into the instrument and get some notes out. the notes in between those notes that I can play. I could play quite down low and I could even play higher than that if I really wanted to. So now how do we put that together to make a song? Well, we learn the valve combinations and we learn how we have to tighten and loosen our lips to get the sound that we want, and then we can play whatever we would like. Along with uh, using our tongue to help start and stop the air. So here we go. that one. Thank 
thank you for listening to uh, about the trumpet. And now we will move on to the rest of the brass section. Hello, fifth graders. I'm Mr. Hallett, the band director over at Hoover and Irving Elementary School in West Dallas. And I'll be demonstrating for you the French horn. The French horn is a brass instrument, part of the brass family of the band. And as you can see, it's very ornate, lots of tubing. Because it's a brass instrument, it has a mouthpiece in which you produce the sound by buzzing into it like this. I will be demonstrating for you uh, by playing the song Star Wars. And that is the French horn. And I will be demonstrating for you the trombone. The trombone is the only instrument in the band with a slide. All the other instruments have either keys or valves. The trombone is a low brass instrument, part of the brass family, and it has a brass mouthpiece in which you need to buzz into to produce the sound. I will be playing for you a song called Rally to demonstrate the trombone. And that is the trombone. And I'll be demonstrating for you now the baritone. The baritone is a brass instrument, part of the low brass family of the band. Because of that, you have to buzz on the mouthpiece. And that produces the sound. The song I'll be playing for you is the song I played for the trombone with a little variation. It again is entitled Rally. That is the baritone, and the baritone, unlike the trombone, which has a slide, has valves like a trumpet, but much larger instrument than a trumpet, and of course lower in pitch. The baritone. And last but not least, I will be showing you percussion instruments. So, I'm Miss Easton, and I just want to talk a little bit about the percussion section. Now, percussion is a very fun instrument, but it does take a lot of work and dedication because you play more than just a drum. Okay, this is a snare drum. Looks like this underneath. But I live, it sounds like this. I live in an apartment building, so I'm gonna put it down onto something that just mutes it a little bit. It's still gonna be kind of loud. When you uh, choose percussion, if that's your instrument, you'll get a practice pad to use at home. That's rubber, it's very quiet. You can't even hear someone using it from the other room. All right, so other instruments have fingerings. And snare drum or and drums have something called rudiments. So you do different things with your left hand and right hand. You might do something like a flam, where you use both hands. And then there's something called a multiple bounce or a buzz, where you push down and you actually get more than one sound to come out. So you can put all those together and you can have a song that uh, really adds to the music and the team of your band. Sounds something like this. All right, the next thing that I'm going to show you is something else you'll be responsible to learn when you're in the percussion section. This is our beginner bell kit. 
Now, we don't rent percussion instruments to the students through the district, but before making this video, I checked on Facebook Marketplace and I saw at least 10 different percussion, beginner percussion kits on sale anywhere between $150 or less uh, in the Milwaukee area, and then it's yours to keep. Uh, we don't rent them, but they are not hard to find. All right, so we have mallets for the xylophone or the glockenspiel is what it's called. Um, you learn both instruments, so it is a little bit more work and takes a little bit more time. You also have to be a very independent player with a good beat and know that you don't need uh, somebody else and you can play independently. The at-home practice bell kit or glockenspiel is going to sound something like this. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in band next year. Now that instrument introductions have been given, let us give you a little more information about how band will look like for this next year. Students will be expected to commit to the band program for the entire year. Weekly lessons and rehearsals are given at school at no cost to you. To start, lessons will be given over Zoom call with your band director. We will expect you to practice assigned lesson book pages and band music five days a week for about 20 minutes per day. We will perform in concerts when it is safe to do so. And grades will be given every quarter and will be based on attendance and participation at rehearsals and participation for weekly lessons. Students will need an instrument, which we are encouraged to get from the school music store, a relative, or a friend. A limited number of school band instruments are available for $50 per year based on financial need. You will also need a band book, which we will use in lessons and rehearsals. Additional materials may be needed depending on the instrument that you choose. More information on this will be provided in the Band Recruitment Registration Google Form that is attached to this video. If you are interested in being a part of the band program, please complete this form and turn it in to us by Friday, September 11th. We hope that this video gets you excited about being a part of the West Dallas, West Milwaukee band program. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact the band director for your school via email. We look forward to hearing from you and working with you this next school year. Let's make music together. Let's make music together. Let's make music together.